let's do a nice little history roll. Oh my god, I remember. Well, There's not a lot of stuff that happened in the last one. Just a lot of punching, a lot of kicking, it's a, a lot three. of slashing. I got, oh thank god, I got an eight. I, I thought I was going to have to do that again. But Chowder, you're literally the best at it. <laughs> uh, I got a seven. I got three, yeah. So I think I'm Matt, doing it unless somebody... What did Matt get? I got an 11, so... Oh, okay. All right, so it is me. Uh, so last time, uh, we began the fight with Kiso slash Queso. Uh, <laughs> and he also was a very skilled fighter. Uh, he could clap one-handed slash slap a face of a gnome and make it sound like a clap and he's tough he was doing a ton of damage and i believe we ended with uh our poor i mean poor so, was I. Lock. so was uh, i also doing a lot of damage yeah but this is Locke's story okay yeah. <laughs> but we ended with our poor himbo lock uh getting his clock cleaned and going unconscious, and I believe yeah, we are came out of his butt. in media res, uh, going back to the view of like his teeth going midair as his body slams into the ground. The mm. teeth have yet to fall. Yeah, they have, still his, his body. <laughs> his body has fallen, but his teeth are still just kind of like this. Going, this episode going directed it. by Zack Snyder. <laughs> I'm so funny. <laughs> Topical. Um, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Okay, so the scene before you as Locke is falling to the ground, bloodied, teeth flying, um, he's kind of just bared his soul in front of you, talking about how his, his family's all left, and Kizo aptly points out that Locke is not innocent in this. He's not free of the blame. He chose to do all those things, even though Locke thought he was doing it to provide for his family, and that doesn't excuse the the means that he he did to get all of that money and and uh take care of his family so it was a very somber pretty pretty metal to just be like hey guess what you're a shitty dad murder (laughs) it's just that is the end of kiso's turn now and it is bait's turn uh bait is one freaking out about mave in the boat because mave was stuck in the swirling boat also infuriated at like the elitism of everything Kiso just said and did before insulting a person and then trying to murder them, just really livid and is going to cast Mass Cure Wounds oh, okay. on Locke and Jetta. And just in case, I vote Lishi. I imagine he's not doing so great. What does Mass Cure Wounds do exactly? So I can cast it within a 60-foot uh, area. I can choose up to six creatures. You might want to also heal up Tony while you're at it. Then oh, if to- oh, yeah, Tony's right there. Sorry, yeah. I just totally... <laughs> Tony, how did, How could I forget about Tony Lyons? Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to target Tony, Locke, Ivo, and Jetta, and they're all going to get... That's a five... That's a four, so nine, and that's an eight, so 17, plus uh, my spellcasting ability modifier, which is two. So uh, they are all healed for 19 points of damage. Nice. Holy crap. Okay. That was, uh, that, was, that was my fifth level spell slot. So I know it's not super dramatic to be like, I'm mad, heal, but, it, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big thing. You can infer some drama. Okay, so... Uh... As you see Locke fall to the ground uh, and notice that your whirlpool has sadly been closed by the fact that you got shot by this raining crystal gun, you you search deep within you to find the the accurate words to to scream out and, and cry out at how angry you are at this man in front of you, but it kind of falls flat on him as as you notice that you're more so talking about how much you care and empathize with your party members now. You've, you've come on this long journey together where maybe you don't quite know everything about each other, but you're almost a family now. And, and you see Locke kind of come back to his senses, um, still prone, lying on the ground, but, but you see his eyes start to open and the, the color kind of rushed to his face again. Do you have any other actions you want to do? Uh, no, I'm still a comfortable distance away, I think. I'm guessing because of how quick this is, Kiso definitely sees Locke stir with the healing energy. Yeah. Okay. Then Bait is just going to yell, We may not have what it takes to be pirates, 
but you sure as hell don't have what it takes to survive in the fucking Badlands. And Block wakes up. Uh, that brings us to Jetta. Okay, so unrelated, but um, I'm kicking myself because I'm looking at Uncanny Dodge and I'm like, oh, I could have cut that <laughs> damage in half. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, you man. You could have. I could have. Too late now. Uh, anyways, so I'm gonna... I actually haven't thought through what I want to do yet, I guess. Well, now now's the great time to do that. All right, you know what? I'm going to cast... I'm going to cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter. You have to make a... Is that a wisdom save? Wisdom save, yes. As you begin to cast the spell, you feel some sort of energy pulsing back at you, and you take 13 damage, uh, psychic damage. Jesus. Uh, and he is going to make his wisdom save now. Uh, he got an unnatural 20. He succeeds. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to move back like 10, ten more, more feet. feet and uh yeah i guess that's my turn okay you're approaching the end of the dock now um so there's not a lot of more room to move backwards so he's on the so, side where the house is yeah so okay so to get back to where like i am and cult is jetta she would have, have to, to pass run. yeah she'd have to pass kiso wait so, so right okay. now in which case i i want to do is dive into the water and like okay. hide underwater i'm i'm like taking a deep breath wait for you Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm hiding under. So you jump into the water. Um, or are you just gonna like? Are you gonna try to swim under the water closer to land? I'm. I'm gonna just like dive down and uh, stay under underwater until my next turn. Okay. Um, Locke is going to use his movement to stand up, um, and he is going to. Have you moved away from uh, Kizo at all, Bait? Bait has been stationary this entire time. Um, okay, so Locke is going to stand up, newly reinvigorated by the healing word. Uh, he's going to cast shield on himself. Actually, no, he's going to wait to use that as a reaction. Never mind. But he is going to hex uh, the fuck Ooh, out of boy. this boy. Registered um, hex offender. No, thank you oh, to that joke. No, thanks. This is dislike. <laughs> Hard pass. Dislike. <laughs> okay, everybody so dislike that. To... <laughs> if this was one of those telltale games, it would say everybody disliked. <laughs> yeah. He's going to use that, and he's also going to um, use a bonus action to short rest. Or er, not short rest, two seconds oh, rest. <laughs> <laughs> take a little, oh. sne- take yeah. a little sneeze. Second oh my win. God. <laughs> so he regains 1d10 plus 9, so 7, 16 more healing. Okay, uh, and that is his turn. And now it is Colt's turn. Uh, I am, oh, you say about 40 feet away from him? Yeah, 40, 45. All right, I am going to walk 10 feet. I'm going to get within 30 feet, however much that is. And then I'm going to cast Blindness Deafness, attempting to make him blind. He needs to make a constitution saving throw. Okey-dokey. Um, and I'm going to slurp on Kevin's skull. Aww. So, and I'm big going to... Big dip of Kevin. <laughs> big old dip of Kevin. Um, uh, constitution saving throw, he got a 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he good, he good. My saving throw was uh, 17. Okay. Uh, and then I will I'll move backwards after uh, do I do I take any damage for him doing a save? Uh, no. So it was a Constitution saving throw, right? Yes. Then yeah, yeah, you don't. Yeah, and I'll just I'll just back up. If if I was about fifteen feet away, I would go up fifteen and then back up fifteen uh, feet, try to keep some distance. You were forty five away, so you you moved forward. Yeah, so, yeah, move forward to get within thirty feet, and then I'll move okay, back. And then move back Not, to forty five. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So cinematic. And I'll mark off a second level spell slot. Running low, friends. Uh, that brings us to Maeve's turn. All right. Um, how how long is the Tide Pod? It's about uh, 30 feet long, uh, probably uh, 15 foot, or probably 20 foot radius wide. Okay. So what I would like to do is use my movement to kind of, uh, you know, move... Uh, through the Tide Pod. And I'd like to try to commit as much as I can to memory, just like the interior of the Tide Pod. Okay. Um, I want you to make an investigation check. Okay. Uh, my investigation. 
investigation. I think it's going to be a little bit more in-depth than a perception check. Yes, absolutely. Some big brain moves happening over here. Okay, uh, I am going to use my Tides of Chaos and give myself advantage. Okay. Or, sorry, it is it is Tides of Chaos that gives me. Awesome. Okay, so I went from a 9 to a 15 uh, plus 1, which is 16. Okay. Um, with a 16, you not knowing exactly how the Tide Pod works, you kind of just get the general layout of, of what's going on. Um, you can see that there are pipes that run along the entire uh, length of the pod with some big tanks that are connected to them at either end. Um, in the front, there's that captain's chair, a periscope, uh, a lot of seating along the sides. It's not like it's not like a side-by-side seating that you would have in a car. It's more like a, a bus where it's all on, on the running parallel to mm-hmm. the Tide Pod. Um, so you don't exactly know what makes it move, but you have the general layout of what's going on. General layout. Okay, awesome. And in my investigations, did I notice anything that might be used as a weapon of sorts? There is no weapon on the Tide Pod. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, and I assume I'm using that's, my move. That's only for the Tide Pod Plus, available oh. in Space Gray. With extra bleach and oxyclean. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and that is my turn. Okay, uh, that brings us to Tony, uh, newly reinvigorated by the healing word. Um, he is going to keep trying his hardest <laughs> to punch this guy. He gets a 14 versus AC, which again is a miss. Um, and he will have to take... Wow, he only takes two damage. Lucky little Tony Lions. Um, that will bring us over to Kiso. Okay. Um, Kiso turns around, seeing Locke back up. You never knew when to stay down, kid. Uh, and he's going to keep attacking him, which is a lot. Hey, Kiso, maybe miss an attack for once. I'm sorry. It's very difficult to miss with this guy. Okay. So only one hit this time. One hit this time. <laughs> Two. I hate you, Chatter. That is true. That is true. You're the one who didn't do math correctly, so don't blame him. I hate you too, Pat. That's fine. Oh my god, I'm all like shit. How's Locke looking? I'll tell you in a second after I do this math. Uh, that was a very, very hard hit for sure. Um, definitely a little bit more blood starts to pool out of Locke's mouth, but he's still standing. Um, he is going to make a bonus action to fire his gun one more time uh this time trying to hit both Locke and tony Ooh, he misses way to go oh thank god i was gonna die if that hit it's weird because yeah if Locke dies then pat actually dies and no one's here to dm the rest of the game yeah that's true okay uh so after he fires his gun uh he tries to make it so that it hits both of them and accidentally shoots it into the water uh, and then the, the crystal kind of just explodes into the water making a nice little <laughs> I'm here at Bates' turn. Okay! How close are Tony and Locke to the boy? They're in touching range, so like five feet. Five feet, you say? Yes, sir. So, I am going to uh, take off my back from your good old friend Masak, the uh, Birch Staff of Warming. And I am going to cast Wall of Fire, which is only one foot thick, and I can choose the diameter. I am going to cast Wall of Fire on the solid surface of the dock beneath him, enclosing him as tightly as I can okay. to A, keep him trapped in there so he has to take damage if he moves, but B, also, docks are made of wood. This is true. Do do I have to do anything to save against it, or is it just if I try to move? Uh, if you try to go through it, then you have to take. Uh, you have to make a save and then you know take the appropriate damage. Um, but I am not trying to burn him. I am trying to trap him and destroy the dock beneath him. Right. I'm gonna try to figure out how to do fire stuff. Setting things on fire. Five. Yeah, but it doesn't look like there's anything concrete. 
So I'm just gonna roll a general check every turn. Um, yeah. So I mean, if you want me to apply the the damage that he would take, if you want, I can roll that damage against like the dock, because like physical things have health that you set for them. The thing that I am struggling with is it's a dock that's always on water. I would think that it is hydrated in the slightest bit, so that would resist actually getting set on fire. Sure. And if the, the spell itself doesn't do direct damage, it's just if something moves through it, I am i don't know how to apply that damage to the dock unless we just say it damages it every turn. What I think I'm going to do instead is every turn I'm going to roll a check to see if the dock starts to catch on fire, and then if the dock starts to catch on fire, I'm going to allow it to spread. Okay, I did misread some of the things. So even though he's inside it and it's not touching him, um, on one side of the wall selected by me when I cast the spell uh, deals damage to people inside. So he will take damage from me casting it. He just has okay. to make a, to he'll have to make a save now, and if he ends his next turn in it, he'll take damage. Okay, what's the save? Uh, the save is going to be dexterity. Okay. Also, the top of the dock is going to be relatively dry catching on fire if we're in the sun yeah i mean even then it's not like the bottom and the top are not gonna have some sort of osmosis type shit going on yeah my misreading doesn't affect like your your call on all that stuff yeah um but yeah he'll have to he'll have to make a deck save plus y'all been splishing and splashing true splishy splash okay so the decks he got an unnatural 20 okay so yeah uh let me roll the damage and it'll take half well did he survive yeah yeah well, yeah he makes yeah he guess makes what his... motherfucker what i don't take any damage on a success okay well let me roll the damage just to know how sad i get to be that's a three okay. that's a nine total that's a 15 total uh that is a 23 total and uh that's 30 points of damage that he doesn't take because pat's a giant Douche. Well, it would have been halved, right? So it would, it's only 15 that I wouldn't have taken. That's still 15 more points than he's taken, this so I'm still true, sad. But get fucked. All do right. you have anything else you want to do? Uh, Nope, I have to concentrate on this, okay. so I'm going to be uh, just focusing on keeping this thing, trying to hurt him and burn the dock. I'm going to make a quick check to see if you set the dock on fire. If you do not set the dock on fire this turn. I'm going to roll that every turn you have it yep. up. Yep. Okay, so we're bring it to Jetta, who is currently under the water. Okay, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna resurface from the water, and so upon seeing, like, that he's surrounded by a wall of fire, is that what's happening? Yeah, yeah. yes. Okay, my original plan, uh, can't be done. Uh, Welcome to the club. <laughs> Alright, let's, uh, go with an improvised plan, too. I take a flask of oil, and I chuck it into the uh, the the wall of fire. Okay. Aw, Colt is rubbing off on you. <laughs> Shield your eyes. Okay. Um, Fireball Jetta edition. <laughs> roll a dexterity check. Oh, baby, I'm good to at see dexterity. If you can hit. Never give a rogue a dexterity check. Yeah, boy, eighteen. Okay, so you make uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to flavor this a little bit. You pop back out of the water trying to figure out what's going on to make your next move. And you see a pillar of fire. And you're sitting here like, what the fuck is going on? I thought we were in a fight and now people are setting fires. But then you remember, wait a second. And then you pull out a flask of oil from your bag. And you look at the fire. And you look at the oil. <laughs> and you look at the fire. And you just go YOLO and you yeet it all the way across. Uh... It bounces off of Kizo's chest, and I'm going to roll a d4 to see which direction it falls. So it could fall on Locke, it could fall on Tony, or it could fall on two empty spaces. It falls on an empty space behind Kizo, uh, splashing the ground Burn with the dock. oil. Burn the dock! So based on the way your fire is, it will be touching the oil. Yes! Oh, Jetta, your your chaotic energy is just <laughs> so beautiful right okay. now. So the space immediately behind Kizo. Uh, so it's kind of hard to explain, but Kizo is facing away from the shore. Locke yeah. is directly in front of him. Tony is to his right. Jetta is all the way down on the end of the dock. And uh, the other two, uh, Kalt and Bait, are behind him. 
Um, so the space that is immediately behind Kizo and the wall of fire erupts into flames. Hell yeah. Now I'm gonna die back, take a deep breath, and die <laughs> okay. back in. <laughs> die back under the water. Okay. Um, it is now Locke's turn. And as he sees this fire begin to start, um, he is going to attempt to stab through the wall of fire to push Kizo into the, the spot that's on fire itself. Uh, so he will have to make the check to move through it if successful. Um, because he is standing next to Tony, he gets advantage on this attack. I mean, he has a trident. He has reach. He could just, like, poke him. Right, so I'm saying if he succeeds in attacking him, he's going to push him a, okay. a space. Okay, I see. Yeah. Um, oh, that's bad? That's better. Okay, so he does hit. Um, he's going to do 1d6 of damage. 1, and he gets an extra d6 because he hexed him. 3 plus 8, 11 points of damage, and he's going to push him back into the fire. Okay, how much damage does that do again? What'd 33. Yikes. That's all I have to say about that. It's just it's one single yike. Can I get okay. an individual um, yike for fire damage? Uh, and then he's going to take an additional five points of damage for ending or for being pushed into the actual fire. Oh wow! Oh yeah, because then the trident too, and yeah. then the 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 big fiery path. Big moves. Yeah. Big moves. Chizo is going to start like, screaming because he's he's taking so much damage. What you just did was. A, a lot. Like, he's never felt damage <laughs> like that before. <laughs> I think um, this is what pain feels like! You can see his clothes start to burn away a little bit, just singeing on the very edges and exposing a little bit more of this purple crystal armor. And then, our boy... Did we decide that if I action surge to attack again, I also don't get the attack, the extra attack? You do get the no, extra attack. You do get extra attack. Yeah. Okay. Because so yeah, it's an extra action. Yeah. At seeing Kizo get so bloodied and hurt and now almost set on fire himself, uh, Locke is inspired and he's going to action surge, uh, make two more attacks. Damn it, that's an action. I was hoping I could just absolutely pop off. Pop off. Pop. Pop. Okay. Uh, Speaking of pop, can't wait to see those levels. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys see... Um, as Jetta throws the the oil from just downtown, literally like the, the furthest throw you've ever seen um, Jetta make, it falls flat in the sense that it doesn't actually cover Kizo in the oil, but Locke sees the, the opportunity that Jetta has provided him with, and he takes his trident, and rather than attempting to stab him with it, he kind of just yes. pushes yes. him back into the fire, dealing a massive amount of damage. Uh, and the rage that fills Locke with, with seeing his mortal enemy finally almost dead. He action surges and just continues to try to beat the shit out of him. Uh, Kizo drops to one knee, still alive, but very, very bloody. It is now uh, Colt's turn. Oh, man, I thought you'd never say it. Oh, no. Um, he was born for this. Uh... I am going to use I'm going to use the void staff to cast negative energy flood. Uh, he's within sixty feet, correct? That is correct. I send just making ribbons. shit up at this point. No, oh my god! I send ribbons of negative energy at one creature you see within range. Uh, he must make a Constitution saving throw. You heard of sending positive vibes? Now we're sending <laughs> negative energy. <laughs> oh, I've got plans. I've got plans. For what's oh. going down. That would be a 15 constitution saving throw. He fails. He's going to legendary resistance and, and pass. That's fine. I wish I had the option in battle to be like, mm, I'm going to not do that. He takes 42 <laughs> points of damage halved. Holy moly. 21. Thanks, Matt. Flavor this however you want, but you just killed him. Oh, okay, so for, I don't kill him. I turn him into a zombie, first of all. Oh, um, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta put this into into some fancy words. So, like, come now. We aren't quite finished with you yet, and I'm going to whip the staff, and with one hand, uh, like these dark ribbons start coming out of the staff, and a bunch of dark ribbons come out of my hand, and I'm going to like take him apart and then put him back together wrong as a zombie. Um, and as his soul, oh as his soul start, you can actually like physically see his soul like start to like 
deteriorate, I am then going to cast Soul Cage again, getting rid of Kevin, and I'm going to grab Queso, is and I'm going to only Soul call Cage him Queso. Soul Cage is a reaction, right? It is a reaction, okay. All right. and I believe <laughs> 60 feet. Um, so uh, let's 11 charges right there off of my staff. So I'm down to so three charges. When when Kalt did this to Kevin back in the cafeteria, I don't think we had a direct line of sight on it. But yeah. Bates sees this happening and watches the ribbons obvious. literally directly connecting them and is just like yeah. livid. Yeah. Slips so around horrifying. Says, what are you doing? I, I'm taking apart Kiso and then like you can see his soul just like being yanked towards the staff. <laughs> what do you mean? I am finishing and slaying our enemy. What's happening in front of everybody else is you can you can see the vitality drain from Kizo's face as he becomes very gaunt and his skin stretches tight over his his uh, his bones um, as a kind of shadowy figure is almost ripped out of his spine uh, and you leave a lifeless husk of a being behind as the soul gets sucked into the void staff and it starts to glow with a purple energy. Uh, well, that was nutty. Welcome to uh, this episode, the final episode of Locked and Loaded, the adventure written and run by Pat. I hope that you are sincerely enjoying this chapter 48, The Bad Guys. This is going to be a very, very quick breakaway just with a couple programming notes, as well as a message from a community sponsor. So you may have heard from them before, but let's give a little bit of our attention to Dimension Door. When the warmth of summer is under threat. I spy with my little eye something big and gray. Oh man, that's a big storm cloud over there, don't you know? One group will brave the storm. Ugh, Suka, it is colder than Baba Yaga's tits out here. Literally, right now. We must use our most powerful weapon. Quick, everyone, love each other. You can listen to the adventure. If you climb in the saddle, you best be ready for the ride. Roll the dice and have some feelings with the Dimension Tour podcast as they play through Paizo's Reign of Winter. Oh, except, you know, you don't actually need to roll the dice because we, we like, we, we pre-recorded this whole thing and we already rolled the dice, so. <laughs> Shmerigold, no, we are recording right now. Oh, dear. Good girl, just quiet So Dimension Door have been friends of the podcast for quite some time, so be sure to check them out wherever you find your podcasts as they play through Reign of Winter. Again, that is The Dimension Door, anywhere you find your podcasts. So to our programming notes very quick, first things first, uh, we are having a live listening party for this episode two days after it's airing, so that will be uh, June 18th, that's a Friday, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the U.S., Uh, so if you want to join that call with us, with us and other community members. It's fun to laugh, chat along, send gifts, question things that maybe don't make a ton of sense, or critique our DMing and our knowledge of the rules. It's all welcome, and it's all a fun time. Uh, You can do that in our Discord, DicePopuli.com. There's a link to join right there. So this Friday at 7, uh, if you're listening to this more than two days after it aired, it was a lot of fun. Uh, A week after that, on June 25th, at 7 p.m. Eastern in the U.S., uh, we're going to be recording our next Fifth Wednesday bonus episode. And uh, it is a thing that you can participate in live. We are going to do a question and answer session with Pat on uh, really anything you want to know about Locked and Loaded, its conception, its execution, what he wanted to happen, maybe? I don't know. Uh, any question you can think of, you can ask it. Live in the chat, anybody who is a member of our Patreon will be able to participate in that recording. If you are not a member of the Patreon, it's totally fine. Don't worry about it. You can still ask questions. We're taking questions any way that you want to submit them. Uh, So uh, you can email us. You can message us in Discord. You can uh, add us on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, As long as we get it, we'll be sure to ask Pat the question. These are some of my favorite episodes, and I'm really excited to do that. So the deadline for those questions is uh, June 25th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time in the U.S. And if you're a member of our Patreon... Join us for the call. If you're not a member of our Patreon, join our Patreon. And then join us for the call. We're really excited. 
Uh, lastly, for the future, uh, after uh, the fifth Wednesday bonus, July is going to feature releasing two episodes of Entrenched, our bonus Eberron campaign by Ryan, into our main feed. Uh, so those of you who have not subscribed to our Patreon, you'll be able to hear uh, where that uh, adventure is going, and it gets pretty wild pretty early. Uh, and then in August, we'll circle back to Dicey Waters with a new above board of my own design as I transition us from Locked and Loaded into an adventure run by Chowder. We'll have more details on that in the future. So that's it. We got a live listen this Friday. Fifth Wednesday bonus recording after that. Two episodes of Entrenched and then back to business as usual. Thank you so much for listening. And I'm going to get out of your way. See what happens to Kiso and we can find out who the bad guys really are. So technically speaking, he does become a zombie and it pursues whatever creature it can see closest to it. You okay. can play it that it's friendly or unfriendly. That's up to you. Uh, what, it's, it's DM choice. What stats do I get as a zombie? It would just be a zombie, like a regular zombie. Just a normal ass zombie. So yeah, you can play it uh, if you want to play it that he's friendly or unfriendly. It doesn't specifically say. It just so, says pursues whatever creature it can see it's closest so to. So Jed is going to react by coming out of water and going, what the fuck? Yeah, I know, right? I'm really glad that I'm da- hanging out down in the... Uh, yeah, yeah, Maeve doesn't see any of this shit. I forgot. I learned this spell from Maeve. I'm not just joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Just, it's, a, it's a funny joke. <laughs> Zombie is going to stand up, uh, look around. It is currently on the space that is on fire still because that's where Kizo was. Um, but it sees Tony and it's just going to take a, a swipe at it. Um, it's moving away from the, the space that is on fire. It's going to take five damage, uh, and make an attack. He fails miserably. So zombie stands up and starts to attack. Uh, Tony kind of grabs onto his arms and holds him at bay. He's like, Hey, can any of you guys, uh, help me over here? Uh, and then at that moment, I'm going to roll for the fire spreading. Yeah, uh, bait is going to drop, if, if I can do that now, is going to drop concentration on the wall of fire. So, yeah, that's fine, but the space that's behind yes. it is still yeah, already on fire. Uh, and the fire starts to spread to the right. Uh, so this dock is probably about 20 feet wide, uh, and 10 feet of it is currently on fire. I would like to poke my head out of the Tide Pod, see okay. everything going on, just be like, whoa, what? What the hell happened up here? So yeah, I just wanna I wanna paint the picture for you. Since you have been inside the the Tide Pod, you missed uh, zombie happening, mm-hmm. the dock being on fire, yep, lock being almost eviscerated, yep. So it's just like there's so many things happening that you are not aware of. <laughs> yep. Ah. Uh, and meanwhile, the fucking gnome is still levitating 15 yep. feet yeah. above the water. <laughs> Um, as, as you guys kill Kizo, Ivo is just like, "Oh, thank you, you've you've saved us." Uh, oh, I did some real saving. Tony is like, "Hey, we're still not out of the water here. Can somebody please get this zombie off of me?" Zombie, come here. T- do you have control over it? No. Uh, only no. if you give me control over it. No, no. Okay. <laughs> I like that you just ass- that call assumes that he has control of the zombie because of Jerry. Yeah. It's the first time he's used a spell. He may not necessarily yeah. know what it could no, do. No, that's no. I love that. So zombie is still like trying to get at Tony and just gnashing its teeth. Ah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna climb back onto the dock and uh, I guess just kill that zombie just behind that motherfucker. Yeah. Make yeah. An attack. Yes. So just point of order that the the fire is sort of splitting the dock. So Colt mm-hmm. and I are on one side, and then. Jetta and Locke are on the other Jetta, side. Jetta, Tony, fire. Locke, and technically uh, the, Maeve is the on the other side. But I'm mm, on. Right, right, right. Yeah, you're in the, the boat, boat, but it's it's on the other side of yeah. Yeah. So uh, make your attack. It's gonna hit, but if you crit, I want to know. Okay. Uh, almost. I got a 19 flat. Okay, so you don't crit, but you do get sneak attack because it's very clearly being yeah. held up. Um, 14 plus. Two, that's a uh, sixteen. <laughs> He's alive with one hit point. <laughs> Motherfucker! At that point, I feel like Lot could just punch him in the face. Yeah. Really good. So yeah, what's gonna happen is since you said you were gonna try to behead it, uh, you come up and you take your scimitar 
you swing for the fences and you get almost all the way through the head, but you don't quite get that last ligament and the head just like hangs off to one side. And Locke just looks at you, he's like, I gotta do everything myself, and just punches the head <laughs> clean off. Oh, give me a break. Wait, I, oh. that was, oh man, I was gonna so name that cheese. So, so that's the first thing that Maeve sees after popping up? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Christ. Uh, man, that's uh, wild. Anyways, re- really important. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take that gun from that zombie and uh, and search that body for anything of value. Okay, so a lot of it burned in the fire. Fair enough. But I'm um, sure that gun didn't burn. Or did it? <laughs> Make an investigation check for me. Okay. 19 plus 7 is 26. You search the body and you find um, his void crystal armor has been completely shredded apart by all of the attacks that you guys made as well as the fire. It's just almost unusable. Or it is unusable at this point. Uh, but you do find a, a void crystal pistol. Void crystal pistol. Void crystal, crystal like pistol. Crystal pistol. Roger, Roger. Crystal pistol. Uh, we will worry about what that does later. Um, after you attune to it, you'll find out. So while and- all this is going on, I would like to focus my efforts on getting um, the gnome back. So I'm okay. going to gently lower him down with levitate. Mm-hmm. And then um, I'll try to toss a uh, rope or I assume there's some kind of like uh, life or uh, flotation device. Yeah, there's, there's the, floaty things the next to the dock. Yeah, okay. So I'll try to like uh, toss that out to him and uh, get him closer to shore and, or the, the dock and the tide pod. Uh, as they're doing all that, uh, bait is just going to like make, you know, lock eyes with lock and just say lock and nod like you good just to check to see if lock is good. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of staring down at the body. Bait is just trying to see if he's, like, responsive, I guess. In what way do you want him to be responsive, I guess? I don't know. Like, Like if Bait... Bait just wants to make sure that Locke is, like, present and aware of his surroundings. Yeah, so... Okay. Locke very clearly sees the fire and everything going on. I'm literally just, like, if this were an action movie, I'm just looking for them to nod at each other. Like, seeing if he has that level of awareness i'm so confused like at the end of fast and furious where paul walker nods yeah, they just Dominic look at Toretto. each other and they nod to acknowledge that like they're okay okay so you're it's like the bro like chin up yeah. like what's up okay okay i understand <laughs> that i understand that lock um looks at you looks down at the zombie body of his former nemesis um looks at the fire and then jumps into the water in a gigantic cannonball. Oh. Uh, trying to launch the, the, the wave that it creates back onto the dock to put out the fire. Um, oh. So, like, you know, cannonballing to get rid of the fire? That's an, that's an oil fire or grease fire? Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't think... I don't think water can put that out. So, <laughs> technically... Might spread it out. Technically, you are correct, but... I'm going to say that the sheer volume of water has diluted <laughs> the oil to the point that, yes, a giant fireball comes off of it because it is a grease fire, but it completely smothers it from an oxygen perspective and dilutes the oil enough that it all washes into the sea. Oh, my God. Engineering. Okay. okay. Um, I just don't want to fucking deal with it anymore, Matt. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I agree fair. with you. I'm just <laughs> um, saying. Take a drink every time we break into some kind of engineering. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Wait. So, hmm. also, I'm assuming that uh, that my disguise self has worn off by yeah, now. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. You look like Jetta again. So after so after getting that reaction, seeing Locke splash out the fire, Bates just gonna whip around and like stare daggers at Colt and march straight toward him and like as close as he gets w- b- before Colt like reacts or anything, just say. What did you just do? Uh, you'd have to be more... You'd have to elaborate. I've done a lot of things. The person, the living, breathing person that you just shredded with that staff. What did uh, you do? I won the fight. Where is Kiso now? Oh, I don't know. Somewhere. I'm just kind of like put the staff behind me. <laughs> <laughs> 
for my own edification, what do, do you just feed off of his soul now? Like you're slurping, you're slurping Kiso instead of. So there's a specific reason why I did this. There's several things I can do. I can slurp off his soul and I can get hit points back. I can slurp off his soul and he can give me advantage or I can ask him questions or I can use an action to name a place the humanoid saw in life and I can create an invisible sensor somewhere in that place. So this is a very useful tool for finding information specifically for Locke. Yes, Colin is not chastising Ryan. Yeah. Bait is chastising Cult. Okay. That's fine. So, that's fine. Yes. So I just want to be clear in that real. No, quick. no, that's fine. Uh, okay, cool. So yeah, uh, when Bait hides the wand behind. Uh, sorry, when Cult hides the hides the wand behind his back, Bait is seething like madder than you've ever seen Bait, and is just. Um, if you have done anything with that life that is not for your own protection, that is not for sheer survival, you are so deeply in the wrong, and everyone in this group is going to know that. I'm going to get, like, real close to, like, Bates' face. Living dead. We all murdered that man. So what, we just let his essence go to the Aether... Or we can use it to ask important questions. You whinny about how the work is done, but you will benefit from the result. And I'm just going to, like, push pack past him. Uh, Locke is going to be pulled out of the water by Tony now. Uh, and he looks at him. He's just like, man, that's, uh, I never thought I'd see him again. And Tony will respond. Yeah, I mean... I always knew that there was a chance he would be around these parts, you know, like I we we used to see some weird comings and goings back on the mainland that I thought maybe just maybe they had found a way to get inside here. If that's the case, then do you think maybe they use these to get out of the tear and he like nods over to the the tide pod. Lock, you can ask Queso yourself or at least what? with me as an intermediary does does kiso answer your questions or does he act as kiso uh so query soul you can ask the soul a question no action required you receive a brief telepathic answer which you can understand regardless of language the soul only knows what it uses in life but it must answer answer truthfully to the best of its ability the answer Ouch. is no more than a sentence or two and it can be cryptic okay but it has to be truthful and the best of its ability as well. Yeah. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna like slam like because I'm gonna be kind of in the center of everybody. I'm gonna slam down the staff. What questions do you have for Kiso? Uh, Locke is gonna look around at the group. Does he have to say it so that you can hear it or so that the staff can hear it? Uh, I'm gonna be the one asking it and okay. receiving the answers. So. Um, okay. So first question he's gonna ask is, how do you get out of the tear? I will ask Queso that question. We use a special ship. A special ship? Ship. <laughs> yeah, I heard shit too. <laughs> I heard uh, ship. hard, okay. I ship it. All right, everybody, dump out. All right, they use the Tide Pod. What do the Mage Lords want with the Black Tide? Same question. They are in need of some of our services. He's being aloof, but he says they're in need of their services. And then he's going to get real close to Colt. Yeah. At this point, Bait walks up. He's going to get real close to Colt and whisper in his ear, Does he know where my family is? Uh, Colt's going to give like a little nod, and I will telepathically ask the staff that. They're gone. I'm not going to tell uh, Locke that answer. Mm-hmm. I am going to... I'm going to I'm going to slurp up... How many questions have that been? That's been... That's, that's three. That's three. I'm going to use the, a fourth question, and I'm going to tell him, Elaborate on them and be specific on Locke's family. What happened? They knew too much. Oh. So I want to say, I did say elaborate what happened. Roll an insight check. I mean, Carl's not very good at insight. We've been over this before. He thought you guys were being attacked by a shark and left That's for true. safety purposes. <laughs> uh, insight. Uh, that's an 8 plus 1, a 9. He says it with kind of a, a snide chuckle. And you take that to mean that the Black Tide has killed his family. I'm going to look back at uh, Locke, and this is heavy. What would what would Cult do? The worst possible thing, I suppose. 
I'm gonna look at Locke. I'm sorry, Locke. I'm gonna put my hand on his shoulder. I fear that they did not make it. Okay. He's going to kind of look you in the eye. You can see his eyes start to, like, water a little bit. Uh, but then he blinks and kind of recomposes himself and uh, just walks away. I'm going to burn a fifth question, and this is all okay. telepathic. Does Are none of them alive? None of them are the same as they once were. Oh, you hate to hear that. <laughs> you hate to hear <laughs> oh, that. God. Uh, they're not the same as they once were. They're zombies now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say. Does anybody have any remaining questions for Kiso? Uh, I, I got nothing. Um, <laughs> did did Colt <laughs> did Colt share back when we were in the in the tube room in the building? Did Colt share um the any, information about it, the yeah about the black tide gathering near the inner tear? The mage lords, you mean? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, did, I, I thought you did. Yeah, did you call... Did you remember telling us that info? Oh, yeah. I, I would have... I don't hold back any information from you guys. You guys are my best <laughs> so, friends. I would never lie to you guys. Yeah, That's why so, I told the truth. So, Bait is, is going to... Like, looking at the Tide Pod, understanding that this is how it gets by the tear, but also seeing that it's, like, it's less armored than the Liberty was, mm-hmm. and it's just, like, really kind of baffled. It's just going to ask... Um, <clears throat> What business have the mage lords this deep in the Badlands by the tear all of a sudden after all this time? Colt's, Colt's going to think for a second and he is going to weigh the questions that he has for uh, for a case of and weigh this question. And he's going to ask, how are Locke's family different? They don't know who they are anymore. With that, I'm going to Locke, come here for a moment. I'm going to run over to Locke. And at this point, uh, uh, Kiso's soul is now free to enter the afterlife or whatever. Okay. The spell ends. Uh, so what do we see? Do we see like some kind of like the the spirit like rise into the sky or sink down? Is it like the end of Tron with this big pillar of light and a disc? I think the way it makes sense is uh, you see the void staff has been glowing with this energy. And after he asks this last question, which is telepathic and you don't hear it. Uh, it begins to fade. The glow itself begins to fade. I'm gonna like run up to. I'm gonna run up to Locke and like whisper in his ear. There might be hope. It seems even in death he was. Uh, what's the right word? Uh, A dick. Nefarious. Nefarious. Oh. It seems that they potentially wiped their minds of you and who the, of who they were. They are alive, it seems, but not who they were. He's gonna look at you and just kind of nod because that's he doesn't know what to, what to think. They don't even they probably don't even remember who he is in that at that point. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure this is all whispered. Yeah, he kind of gets a little bit excited about that because that also means they don't remember that he's a criminal. But there's no guarantee that they'll even accept him into their lives because to them he's a complete stranger. Um, he's going to walk over to the zombie body and pick up the scimitar. Uh, <laughs> And kind of just like look at the trident, look at the scimitar, and chuck the trident into the water. Is that a good trident? Was that one of our good tridents? It was just a normal trident. It wasn't <laughs> magical or anything. Okay. Gonna hawk. You're just gonna hawk good trident in the yeah. water. Uh, so Locke will look around and just say, "Well, we should probably get out of here." I cannot agree more. Bates gonna step forward and uh, and 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 uh, just speak up. Uh, we don't know the state of the Liberty's repairs, but. Uh, Seems we have a couple ways out of here if we can't regroup. Ivo is going to speak up. Uh, if it's not too much to ask, would you be able to leave me the Tide Pod? I kind of put a lot of time and money and effort into this project. Um, but what what, what if we want to go to the other side? Uh, I could share the plans with you. Uh, okay. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Is uh, there enough room for Jerry and the skeleton crew in here? Oh, fuck, Jerry. Oh, God, they're on the other side of the island. Damn. Oh, I guess we gotta leave them. There's gonna... Cult is gonna give another very dark look at bait. Like, strike two. <laughs> Jedi <laughs> asks, if you're, if you're gonna give out plans for the Tide Pod, can you make, like, two copies? Hey, you're me? good at drawing maps. Do you think you can just draw down a copy of the plans? 
I only have the one printed already. It would take me quite some time to remake them. Why aren't you all in the same party? Can't you just share? Uh, nah, I was just I was just tagging along for the thing right here. As much as I would like to l give you back your freedom, I think it would be best if you came with us to our friends in the Liberty. Cold? And perhaps you'd be able to illu illuminate your plans further. Cold? Um. Yes, me. Can I ask? Back, back inside the uh, the the tide uh, hideout thing. Yeah. The all the the people in there, that that burned was was that you? Yes. You don't have to tell. Okay. It was me, Maeve. I. Okay. I I think this guy, like Mister uh, Iso here, I vote. he should stay away from us as far as possible, because we only seem to bring more hurt and more pain to everybody else that seems to interact with us. And I know we wanted to save Mr. Locke, but... And she gestures to, like, every, like the smoldering flames and whatever. She's, she's like, like, look at this. I thought, are, are we the bad guys? How are we the bad guys? We killed the bad guys, Maeve. Uh... Those men in there, those gabagool monsters, those gabagool gobblers... They were bad people. Hey, guy, I mean, we did some bad stuff as Black Tide, but I don't think that makes me a bad person overall. Look, we're here with a murderer, a massacre perpetrator, two pirates, and well, someone... I, I take great offense to that. <laughs> yeah, so what? We've all <laughs> fucked up. I don't think we get to debate the morality of who's worse in this terrible party. No, we do not get to debate because we won. The losers debate their morality. The winners just go forward. I appreciate that we are now taking this introspective look at all the fucked up shit that we've done, but I would like to go home now. I mean, fucked up shit all you've done. I'm just a thief right here. Well, all I can say is I hope that we fucking lose sometime soon, if that's what it's going to take. And is it Bates just going to walk uh, down the dock away from them and take a breath? Right, looking at my staff lovingly? <laughs> Not likely. Ivo is going to go into the workshop, grab the plans, and bring them back and give them to um, wh whoever's standing there. Probably Colt, I guess. As Bait walks away, Locke is going to follow him uh, out of earshot of the rest of you. And he's going to say, I know what you did. Well, hey. I didn't put myself on the list of fucked up shit for a reason. We're all in this together, aren't we? You made it. Now let's get the hell out of here. What if I didn't make it? I had faith in you. He claps him on the shoulder. Well, I'm incredibly pissed that you decided to put my life on the line for your own selfish reasons. For mine? For ours? If your family's out there, how else do you think you're going to see them again? There was a way out. There was a way out, Locke, for... All of us. And that's worth it. It's right there and we can take it. I had faith in you. Maybe next time you could have a little faith in me. It would have been nice to have a heads up. Well, I guess we all make our mistakes. You don't know what the Black Tide does to people. You don't know what happened to me in there. And you have no goddamn way of knowing that I was going to make it out. Then chalk it up to a risk that paid off. He's just going to walk away. All right, gang. I think we got what we need. Ivo, I really, really can't say thank you enough. Without you, there's no way we were getting off of this island. Uh, if you could possibly just tag along with us for a short duration so that we can get back to our, our main ship. And you mean our, this one? And I pull out the miniaturized version of the friendship that I shrunk <laughs> a couple episodes ago. It's right here. What What can you make that thing into, Maeve? Um, I'd like to set the miniature boat in the water on the opposite side of the dock mm -hmm. from the... Um, from the Tide Pod, and then based on my uh, investigations uh, and my studying of the Tide Pod, like just kind of looking around and stuff, I'd like to try to duplicate it to the best of my ability. Okay. 
Um, and I'll even make a check for this if you want. What I'm going to say instead is I want Cult to make an insight check. Uh, that's another eight plus one nine. Oh, my God. Uh, a lot of the the wheels start to turn in your head as you see Maeve put the friendship down. And you remember that it can turn into all these different things. So you think, wait a second. I have these plants. What do you want to do with those plants? I burn the plants down. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> uh, I'm going, but I, I see Maeve doing this, right? Like she's yeah. actively trying to do something. Uh, Maeve, 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 Maeve. Uh, if you need to look at the plans to better visualize what I believe you're attempting to do, look at these really quickly. Okay, so I'll hand uh, over the plans to try and help. I guess. Given the plans, you now have advantage on an Arcana check. Uh, let's call it a DC thirteen. So uh, here's what I'm gonna do. So I rolled okay. an eleven plus uh-huh. one, um, but. As I uh, start to kind of uh, struggle a little bit with the plan and what's going on, I start to kind of add my own little flair in the form of using bend luck, which lets me add a D4. So uh, 13 minimum. So then it's basically as I finish uh, changing the friendship into this new, uh, I guess, Tide Pod 2 electric boogaloo, um, it's, it's, it's now, uh, you can see like kind of etched in the middle on the outside, um, some of the things that we have done and we've experienced, um, you know, from us being on Stoneholm to, uh, meeting Captain Bubblebutt, uh, with a huge ass in a picture and, you know, <laughs> us, uh, on the surfboards and skiing around. <laughs> uh, as well as that, you see the word uh, friendship appear on the side. Hell yeah. How did you do that, young one? <laughs> I uh, turn around, give a thumbs up, and then uh, faint on the dock. <laughs> oh uh, Bates going to look at Maeve fainting and look back at Ivo and say, we're a pretty shitty group of friends, but... I- we get the job done, more or less, and then leans over to check on me. I'm fine. I just, I want to take a nap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so now that you have your own Tide Pod, uh, Ivo is going to take their uh, Tide Pod and go home. Well, since you have the ability to make your own Tide Pod, I uh, just, I just joined the plants. <laughs> Okay. I'll take this. Yes. Hell no, you will not yoink these plants. I'm totally yoinking these plants. Uh, Roll to make yoink. A sleight of hand. Oh, check. baby, I'm good at yoinking. So this is how Jetta dies. <laughs> <laughs> Fourteen plus. Uh, yeah, that's an that's an eight, so twenty-two. Well, I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw for polymorph, please. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Wait, is that would that count as a reaction, or would Jetta yoink them and then you cast polymorph? Uh, yoink, and then I I'm going to cast. Yes, right. Okay, so Jetta gets the plans. Yes, yoinkage has happened. Yoinkage. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what was the total roll chowder for the for the yoink. Twenty-two. Well, but if yeah, you want to cast polymorph? You cast polymorph. Like, I do that. Mm-hmm. I need a I need a wisdom saving throw. Chowder. Can I like try to? S- Swat at Colt's hands and be like, "Stop it!" No, uh, I don't think you'd be able to stop it. So okay, yeah. make the wisdom save throw, Chowder. Flat three plus one. That's four. I got you, cat. <laughs> All, right. All right. Okay. Jetta snatches the plans, and as soon as uh, she grabs onto them, <laughs> Colt turns her into a cat. The plans kind of like fall down like a cartoon piece of paper. As soon as it gets turned to kitty cat, Bates just going to say, oh, look, we already dealt with this with Florence. This is cruel. This is punishment for no... We got the ship. Give her the plan. She saved our bacon. Like, come on, man. What's the point? We will give her the plans when it is time and not any further. And also, for somebody so interested in what people are going to do with their powers and abilities, seem very uninterested in what a pirate is going to do with the Tide Pod. I really couldn't care less. As you guys are bickering, uh, I, I know know that Jetta can't exactly correct him, but like, I am a highwayman, not a fighter. <laughs> <That's correct. laughs> 
I mean, what is a pirate but a highwayman of the of waves? the sea? <laughs> I will pick up. I will. Um, I, it's only going to be temporary. I just wanted to get the plans back. I'm going to okay. pick. I'm going to pick Kitty Cat up and put it in Tide Pod. And at then, this point, uh, yeah, I'm going to say that you. No, all bait it. No, bait is actually going to like hard stand. Like this cat does not want to come with us. We don't make decisions for this cat. Like hard line in the sand. Bait is not going to just like say, oh yeah, turn someone into an animal and kidnap them. He's he's like standing in front of the cat. Absolutely not. Uh, no Maeve, reason. Maeve starts to wake up and is like, oh, oh, that was uh, that was weird. Oh, uh, that's a nice kitty. Where's Jetta? It's Jetta. The kitty has a mohawk. That's Jetta. He's he is not listening to reason. He's trying to kidnap her for no for absolutely nothing. I'm not trying to kidnap her. She's coming with us anyway, but she can't have the plans. Then fucking turn her into a person and ask her. I'm going to uh, take the plans and I'm going to uh, I don't know. I don't have any good hidey holes. Um, does anybody have a bag of holding? Jetta has the... I gave you the leopard print bag of holding, didn't I? I do have the yeah. leopard print bag oh, of holding. Okay. That is true. I am going to put the, the plans firmly in the leopard bag uh, bag of holding your uh, your gucci leopard leopard print yeah. bag of holding and <laughs> okay. uh I, I i'll drop the spell i'll drop the spell afterwards after i stow the bag and like okay. pat down my cloak and everything as all of this is happening Locke and tony are talking tony goes well i guess i should uh get going where where are you gonna go now are you just gonna go back to the island well i think maybe Somebody should stick around here. After all, they don't got no leader no more. You know, I'm a pretty reasonable guy. I think I could really turn this place around and make it, you know, a little bit respectable almost. Back in the good old days when we weren't drug trafficking and human trafficking and all that nonsense. It was just good old fashioned boat trafficking piracy. You know, we need a good pirate back in the lands so Locke is going to look at Tony with a really like puzzled look in his eye and say what about your family what about your son well I just I need to make amends for for all the bad that I've done and the best way I think I can do that is by fixing up this good for nothing sack of shit scoundrels back there oh what's left of them after your buddy over there did his his, his thing you know and maybe after a while, I make it a nice place, and I just get my family over here, and we we have a nice island to ourselves. All right, man. Well, if that's what you think you got to do, then that's what you think you got to do. And he kind of, like, holds out his hand, and they clasp arms, and they nod at each other, and Tony starts to walk away. After, after I get turned back, I'm going to pull out a dagger and press it against Colt's throat. Don't do that again. You're lucky. I'm in a really good mood right now. Alt is just going to sit there unfazed. Anyways, I put, put my dagger back and uh, almost comically, I changed my mood. Well, other than that, I really got to thank you guys. Between all the magic items I've grabbed and the gold from the cavern and the little nest egg I've developed over the years, I can buy back my people's land. And it's all thanks to you guys. If you ever find yourselves in Ninkidu, hit me up. I'll show you around, we can talk, maybe rob a few folks along the way. It'll be a good time, I swear. Wait, wait, Jenna, are you, are you leaving us? I mean, yeah. Uh, I plan to sell some of these magic items and buy back my people's land so that the orcs of Ninkidu can live with dignity, free from Mage Lord and Black Tide interference. Before you go, how much would you value that vest at, per se? I like I like this relationship. I like this partnership. Your boy Locke has big dad energy. That vest has big dad energy. <laughs> I love it. He really wants the vest. The group got its dad back. <laughs> All right. Uh, how, do I do I know how much this vest costs? Hey, hey, uh, Jetta. How about since uh, you probably wouldn't have gotten any of this stuff if it wasn't for us, right? So, how about you keep the gloves and, you know, we we keep the vest as like a, a parting gift. Eh, sorry. Wish I could, but no can do. Everything in this world's got a price, I'm afraid. What about the plans to the Tide Pod? Maeve turns him into a... <laughs> turns her into a cat now. <laughs> all right, all right. 
the plants did a Tide Pod. Okay, now we're talking here. I like I'm that. I'm gonna go over to call it and be like, just, just give her the plants. You wish to give something worth more money than really anything for a fanny pack. Just, we'll buy it from her. We'll trade something. Why, why give over the keys to the store for treats? She's, she's doing it for a good cause. She's doing it for words right now. All I hear is words. We can reverse engineer a Tide Pod. We got it right here with the friendship. Whatever. And I'm just going to like, I'm going to take out the piece of paper and kind of like throw it. I grab the paper and I uh, give Locke the best of holding. Pleasure doing business. Thank you kindly. All right, well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to get on our friendship and go. I would like to go into the the new friend sub and go straight to the front where you drive. I don't care what y'all say. I am driving. <laughs> Before you go back into the sub, I do want to say one last thing to Maeve. And Maeve... Don't lose too much sleep over all the black tides who died, because the kinds of people they were... Well, here, let me tell you a story. My mom and my stepfather used to own a farm. It was good land, and the black tides wanted it. So what did they do? They burned it down, killed my parents to do so. I had to run away with my little brothers in tow. I'm not losing any sleep over the people who died tonight. You shouldn't either. I'm sorry you lost your family, but I I really want to believe that there's at least some good in most people. And if if you forget that, then you're just as bad as them. And I jump back into the Tide Pod slash friendship. Uh, walking by Jetta, Bait is going to say, well, yeah, we sort of came around. Thank you for all your help. Safe travels. You deserve it. Likewise. And Bait is going to f- follow Maven to the Tide Pod. Okay. Uh, Colt, are you getting on the friendship? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been on the friendship. Oh, okay. Locke is just going to stare at Jetta and say, Well, I didn't know you for long, but I thank you for all the, the help you provided my friends in coming to save me. Those weren't empty words. If you ever find yourself in Kidu or any of the surrounding villages, give me a call. I'll show you orcish hospitality. I'm going to just give a, a nice parting salute and get on the friendship. Okay. All right. I'm assuming that Colt is going to want to go pick up all of his skelly boys and Jerry. Yes, this is, this is true. Uh, so you start to sail <laughs> toward that area. I'm going to say that you do not have room for all of the skeletons in animated form, so you will have to turn them into bones if you want to fit them on. But there is enough room for Jerry. All right, that's fair. I mean, we could also strap them to the outside. Oh my like would, the yeah. cans on a just married car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As I'm you, just gonna strap them. To as the you outside. start to do that, maybe it's like, I, I really put a lot of work into building this. Can we not deface it just yet? I'm not defacing it. They're just gonna like hang Cult? behind it. Cult, can we not? Fine. I'm gonna turn them into bones. I'm just gonna like okay. kind of like conk them on the head, and they like kind of <laughs> like, literally just gonna like take them apart I'm and like put, put in them a little in style of flow <laughs> sound there. I'm just gonna start taking them apart and then like stack them up. Like the heads are still like jittering and like opening their mouths and looking around on top of their like piles of bones, but it's Maeve's, more compact this way. Maeve's demeanor seems way brighter than it was uh, ten seconds ago. Uh, so with that, Jerry comes on board. You guys begin to sail away. Since you are underneath the water, you are able to uh, steer away from the maelstrom uh, and begin to get back out into open sea. As you are doing this, Locke is in almost like a meditative state because he's now free. He's been locked up for so long. And you hear him humming a tune to himself. The shining sun we see. The rocks we dare to blinding tear The black tide runs from me
I'm recording. I'm refreshing chronograph. The cockacity. <laughs> cockacity. I got it. You got to gotta change it. the name to something else. Okay, Ryan's got it. What treat are we in for this time? Okay, well, guess I should not have expected a whole lot. <laughs> Here we go. No, 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 no. If you're going to do this, you got to do... Oh, yep, that's what I was going to do. We had the same idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, guys, you got to go in further. Hold on. Oh, my God. Stop. <laughs> cock ass titty. titty. There we go. Yeah. Cock right. ass titty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when do you want to clap, guys? Uh, <laughs> 45? Nice. Yeah, yeah, let's go at 45. Five seconds. Five seconds. Five seconds. I miss Keenan. All right. But does he miss me? <laughs> <laughs>